Hey everybody, welcome to this uh, special uh, Director's Nesh commentary for the Scam School television show. Uh, if you didn't get a chance to see it, uh, check your DVRs. We're going to um, have a little a little icon here to show you kind of where we are in the show, but we're going to have the volume pretty low here so that um, people can watch it at their own pace. Um, and also, if you're watching later, for some other reason, we'll... we'll announce when the breaks are and, and stuff so you can kind of think stuff up but uh welcome uh the scam school television pilots aired earlier this morning and uh i wanted to do a stream to kind of talk about some of the technical stuff and some of the behind the scenes stuff about uh how these got to be where they are um because scam school is obviously a youtube show um and so bringing that over to tv doesn't necessarily mean you know, it's it's copy copy paste. It uh, in some cases does, but in a lot of cases it doesn't. So, um, if you are um, wanting to catch the show and you missed it for some reason, um, you can go to the Discord nightattack.tv slash Discord. There's a link there where um, who knows what will happen. Um, uh, but uh, you can join along, or you can just watch here if you watched earlier um, and. We'll, we'll get into this. So my DVR, I think, I think my DVR probably started too early. So we'll probably end up missing the end of a lot of this. Um, or a lot of the, a little bit of the end of it. So, uh, so we'll start off with, with episode one. I mean, the, the, the very obvious thing is that we kept the scam school theme song and the intro. And that was mostly because the, <laughs> Was what we had when you know when you're doing sort of pilot stuff you kind of can use what you got and make changes if stuff happens later um and so i mean it just kind of made sense to use the actual scam school theme song um so this first trick the the vanishing match um was uh, actually not even a scam school episode that was something that we shot for um, a promotional video um, and it, w it was like six, um, it, it was like six really short things and, um, uh, uh, we ended up cutting two of them out into this, this pilot. Um, oh, one of the things you probably missed and maybe you'll catch it next time is at the very beginning when you see all the names of the people in this segment, uh, look at Kelsey's arm on the very left edge of the frame. Um, <laughs> In both of those segments, in both of those exact moments, um, you could see me specifically kind of coming into frame, and uh, uh, there's some uh, some rudimentary blurring, duplicating going on to kind of hide that. But once you look at it, you, Kelsey's arm looks like super wide and weird. Um, so this segment is. Um, uh, this this is the warded lock segment. Uh, kind of uh, this having this super early in the episode was a note that we got about trying to have a lot of heavy informative information up front because that's what people people like. Um, and so it's 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 maybe a little weird on the very as the it's like the second the second beat of the very first episode, but. Um, but it's but it's really interesting, and I think I think it's a very specific sort of information that that this this that's you know information focused people are interested. So this has got Jagor and Alec, uh, Alec rather, um, who are from the locks, the Austin Longhorn Lock Picking Club. Uh, they, these guys are great. Uh, Jagor is awesome. He's been to a bunch of shoots. Alec is a is a super nice guy. Um, the blurs in this segment, so you can see in the background, you can see the Lone Star logo is not read it out, but then here it is. And so you'll see this in a couple of places where it's like, well, if the logo is not obscured or blurred enough, then I've gone in and removed it. But then you get some moments in the background where the can <laughs> logo can be seen, um, but are uh, uh, super out of focus. Obviously, Jagor's Duck Duck Go shirt here and <laughs> was the heavy lifting on the blurring for um, for this episode. Um, the another like last minute um, sort of blur on this segment that I think 
probably nobody will even notice, was uh, behind these guys, especially in the, the, the three shot of everybody. Um, uh, someone says it's definitely still Austin Beer Works. That's not Austin Beer Works. I think that's Ace. I think that's Ace. Um, but in, in the background of that, of where you can see the, the guy's faces, uh, there are two people playing cornhole. Uh, the, uh, there you go. You can see them right in the corner there. Um, and we got a note kind of a few days uh, uh, ago. Yes, yeah, so the guy in the background is sometimes blurred. Yeah, so here he is, and so is she. Um, though that was a note that we that we got that was like, man, um, hmm. Now, you know, maybe 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 we should blur this guy. And then right after that, I was like, oh, now that he's blurred, all I could see is her. So so uh, those are some sort of last minute things. Um, some of the other blurs, the master lock is m usually grayed out, but sometimes it's also blurred out, um, just depending on, so like there, it's been grayed out. Um, it kind of depends on, on what on, on what that um, shot calls for. This is a moment. So this this moment coming up is a change once once the guys start talking here again about burglary tools. Oh wait, that's weird. Okay, hold on. So in the live broadcast when we watched it earlier this morning, that line from Jagor that bumps up your your crime to a felony and you're not gonna have a good time was I guess was just a hiccup on the PS the PlayStation View side because I noticed it skipped that in the middle of that line on my stream and then I saw it happen on the Twitch stream. That's that's really weird, uh, but also very cool because I thought, man, that's kind of an inelegant cut that they would have made last minute. <laughs> Um, so yeah, uh, open by says logos were blurred because they gave free advertisement. Not necessarily. It's more over like just the right to use someone's logo. You know, you have, um, if, if say we kept the duck, duck, go thing, then someone at duck, duck, go could be like, well, we don't really want to be associated with, you know, how to get through warded locks, you know, burr. Um, it's kind of a liability thing more than like free advertising. Um, and uh, so, so the ones that are in there is um, uh, are usually either too blurred out or uh, uh, whatever. All right, so that's the end of that. So this is the end of the first segment coming up here. These these standups here with with Brian on the. Um, on, on, on this kind of little uh, landing um, is actually a reshoot um, from our initial sends to science. Um, we it was we did the original shoot, uh, rappers there at that location, so we're in a commercial now. Um, but uh, just a little bit to the like, aiming a little to the left to the to the wall of the building across the opposite side of the street, um, and there was a really pretty mural of. Um, like frogs, just a couple of frogs and, you know, a bunch of, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of really great colors and stuff. And, um, uh, what we got back was like, well, in, unless you can get a clearance for that, we're going to need to fix that. And so we went and reshot those. So, um, those two, those, so the rapper that ended that last, that first segment and the one that's going to bring this next one in are actually reshoots. Um, everybody says master lock probably doesn't like it when you show them how to break their locks. Um, I think that's that's part of it. That was also, I, I think there was some concern about potential advertiser conflicts, though I think a note that we had gotten was that that it was actually fine. But we did it anyway. <laughs> um, or we blurred it anyway, rather. Um, I think we did a good job of not. I mean, even even in that segment, they say the the this technique and stuff is not deterministic by brand, so. You know, the, the it, it's, it's not just a master lock thing. Um, uh, so, so what, what else is coming up? Coming up in this segment is, or in this episode, I think Dennis Rogers' 
uh, bending wrenches is like the big thing in this, on this episode. Um, that one actually doesn't have a whole lot of changes. I think, I think it was, uh, the blurring was probably the, the most like time intensive part of this. Uh, but, um, but even that was more like, it was like a mixture of like tedium and, um, like, because uh, there are some automated processes you can do to kind of, um, track masks like that. So some of it is, is, um, is a little easier. Uh, HTTPS 443 says, how much time did you spend on this project? Would you guess the editor editing, etc.? Um, I mean, this was my main focus for the past two or three months, I think probably about two, two months. Um, there was, uh, I'm trying to remember what, I don't even remember now what the, what the, like the green flag on like getting this shit through was, but, um, once that happened, it was like, okay, well this, this is the big focus. Okay. So we're back from break. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, I'm your host, here we go. So what is this? Oh, this is, so this is another one of the lines. Okay. Check, check on the left frame here for Kelsey's arm during, during the names. See, 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 see. Ooh, it's a little, it's a, it looks a little funky. I think that one might have looked better than the, the, the blur in the first segment. Um, so this was an, the other, uh, Lions Gate, um, uh, segment. And this is another cute sort of quick trick. I was actually kind of worried when we were editing this one that maybe it didn't make enough sense in terms of this moment here setting up. Um, I think I think that was one of the flaws in this segment is not not letting letting people know. It's all of the cards have the information, but it's it's like you, if you split a deck in half and then flip them uh, back to back so they look blank halfway through from from either side. I, I don't think that information necessarily came through easily enough. But it, this is such a, a fun simple little trick. Um, but this is this is a fun trick, and then I believe this was Michael Amar. Um, but that's another fun little quick segment, and it kind of gets us in and gets us back into the groove. <laughs> so we've got um, uh, this is the looking the married unmarried looking puzzle riddle, whatever. Uh, Jay Brushwood is like the star of the segment so much he's uh <laughs> he's also the pantalini the the, uh, the the image for for pantalini so here's an interesting thing that if you've seen this uh on youtube you might not have noticed or remembered that the original graphic spanned the entire bottom of the frame and it was the three names presented horizontally um and one of the, when you're editing in general you have also this text graphic is also changed for the same reason um when when you do editing the, you have uh very generally accepted safe zones and title safe zones where you want to keep important action and important text within those boundaries so that if people have overscan or if their tvs are fucked up or whatever you can, they can be seen um, so in the original sort of horizontal layout, um, well, actually in the original horizontal layout, the, the safe zone was fine, but, but, um, um, and I, I won't go into too much detail about, about how this is set up, but, uh, discovery as a whole has a different, uh, sort of tighter safe zone. And that's so that things like the, the bug here in the corner, the science channel bug and unearthed and all that stuff, uh, things like if there's something up in the top right corner or in the top left corner, it's a little, it's a little tighter. And, um, uh, so uh, you, you can't necessarily use the entirety of what you would consider the general safe zone, um, for text. Um, I think, uh, it, and, and that, yeah, that tighter safe zone is mostly for text. Um, so instead we went into that graphic and turned it around so that it was kind of set up to mirror how it is on the table. Um, just like the only thing that it doesn't have is arrows pointing at it, which is which is good because then you kind of give away more of the trick. But um, that 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 is one of the big changes here. 
Um, and that's why also that title where it's like, uh, is a married person looking at an unmarried person? And you say it weird because that, that, that's like three audio clips cut together. Um, that was a similar thing where that was normally like a full, uh, a, a much larger piece of text to kind of cover Brian's mouth because that was a very heavily edited piece of vo voice. Um, uh, so it kind of got shrunk a little bit. It just got to get shrunk so that it mostly could fit into the, um, to that safe, that extra safe zone. Um, I think, oh man, okay. So uh, blurs on this segment. So the food truck in the back is especially obvious on the master shot. That's Chico and the Fox. That's a food truck that's at this bar a lot. Um, but the other ones are the hats. The guys wear these hats with sports logos on them. And so the handling of them is all a little different. On the master shot, they kind of get colored out. Um, or I think it's a tint. So you kind of get a little bit of 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 the the gradation on these solo shots. They are actually uh, ramps. They're gradient ramps, and so they're kind of timed to kind of match the changing color. This graphic is another example of of having to change the text. Normally, the Hannibal face would be on the left, but we kind of swapped it such that the text could be with inside the area. Um, another fun thing, on, especially on this shot where it's kind of Brian's side, but you see Jay's hat. Um, instead of trying to, because the hat is like got an emboss, um, we, we actually like extended the front of his hat to be smooth. Um, we're, we're at the, the Chicago quiz now and we're going to go into our next break, our next commercial break. Um, it was, so instead of like having the jit, 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 jit thing and trying to like color that out or whatever, uh, literally we just uh, took a similar color and extended it in front of it so his hat on on that shot where you see brian and jason uh actually kind of is like bigger it's like a, it's we've just extended it and covered over it completely um uh htbs when will you guys know what the next step or more episodes is next in the weeks or coming months i don't know yeah i, I couldn't tell you um so th this is th this is our second Second? No, first first question, the, our break question, the Chicago team's question. Um, I wasn't too hot on doing these. Uh, just uh, concept? I don't know. I think that the the tie into the, the like, uh, I think with the shows, with the TV show, the, like, the best narrative through line is what we saw in the books of, like, hey, uh, here's a very easy way to like uh, string some stuff together of these different types and look cool or get a free drink or whatever. Um, and, you know, you got the starters, you got the tweeners, and then you got the, um, the whatever it is. And that's, that's uh, I, I think, just by virtue of uh, this being um, kind of a, a quicker edit time, and having to keep a lot of new information in in those stand-ups between the clips, um, I think that the 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 purpose of these sports trivia questions or these little riddles kind of gets a little lost. Um, and so, in in the sense that like they are also really good additions to that idea of like a set of of these sorts of tricks, I I like them. Uh, HDBS, who wanted the questions? The network? No, I think it was more like. Um, it was oh we're back from break um it, it was brian's idea and so we just kept it and it's fine right it's a it's a it's it, it it's a thing that i think discovery has um has uh, like it's it's not an uncommon thing hacking the system wasn't the first one to do it we we're not going to be the last one um So uh, oh, here we've got the um, the stacking glasses uh, a bit. This is a Diamond Jim Tyler's sort of bar bet. It's not even like a magic trick. It's just like a thing, uh, and it's pretty cool. You will see throughout this <laughs> throughout this segment that the lighting that day was was really fighting with us, going between this really nice, uh, you know, cloudy, and then this direct sunlight. It's it's super tough, and you get. Uh, you get some moments where just it was very hard to save. Um, go Murphy. Go Murphy. 
So in this one, the blurs, I think the only real blurs in here are the cups. The cups that they've got here and that they use at the Moon Tower, and I think they still use them, are these eco cups. Um, and so I think that they are um, like uh, recycled plastic or something such that it's it's green green technology. Um, uh, but that's that was a little that that's a little blur. But it's something that is in most every single shot in in this episode or in this segment. Um, some of the changes from from the YouTube version of this segment to the um, uh, to this TV version is uh, the opening where everyone's doing the introductions. You'll notice has changed. It's it's less shots and they're a little longer so that we can have space for the lower thirds and, and everyone's names. Um, uh, a little bit of a different color pass to, to kind of deal with some of this lighting stuff. Um, and of course, cutting out the, uh, the, the sponsor breaks. Um, yeah, this is, this is a really cool spot at the Moon Tower Saloon. We've, I think we've only, we've used this spot a couple of times. Uh, we also did this for the, uh, the rolling a finger through your knuckles or through your through or rolling a coin through your fingers slash knuckles um around that same time oh the other thing is the music the music cue is different i think um the the song that we're hearing now which i think is called phantom jazz was in the entire it was in the entire episode in fact I, there might not have been a sponsor break which is why it was used the whole time um but I kind of cut it to right here when we're in the sort of the the answer segment, and then used a different musical cue because then we could come in from the break on that music cue and continue into this episode, versus here where we start the original edit started with the start of that song, um, or no? Maybe maybe this was it, it was either that or it was either that this song Phantom Jazz was through the whole episode or the first music cue. In the original edit was also used in the bending wrenches episode and i didn't want to or the bending wrenches segment coming up and i didn't want to of the exact same music used in the same episode uh so we're going into break now with uh another commercial break um another commercial break question about reno and los angeles all right so now we're in this the commercial break uh it was uh, one one of the interesting things is that you can't uh, like uh, like um, like like uh, so w the the graphic that we kind of answer this question with when we come back from break is a map um, and uh, I think in our original just like concept cut it was this really ugly just like screenshot of Google Maps um, but you really can't do that you can't just put a google maps <laughs> screenshot because google google owns that screenshot you know and they own that mapping data etc 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 so um the graphic that we have is like a vector graphic that uh um uh i believe someone at discovery or seeker provided with us and um uh, uh it, it's it's a it's a fine graphic but it's also um it's set up for, it's not like a flat style map um it's set up kind of curved so the 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 uh, the the like the, the framing of the graphic is not great because it's kind of framed a little a little too tight to kind of hide the curvature of the earth because we're trying to distinguish between uh lines of of latitude um so we have to have to kind of keep that stuff tight otherwise like we what change the maps you can't you can't change a map um other things other things other things uh man what, i i think i think this last segment is just the bending wrenches with dennis rogers dennis rogers getting uh also getting name checked in both episodes Longitude, thank you. Latitude is flatitude. Oh, okay. Travis Stubbs uh, asks, how much would you say is new slash reshot slash reused footage? Um, so all the stand-ups between, between the segments and in and out of the commercial breaks are new. 
Um, in this episode, all of the actual main content episodes are existing episodes that we re-edited for Scam for for Scam School, um, the TV program, I think. Um, um, and then in the second episode, the um, uh, the the first segment with the the, the jack the human jack o' lantern and the human chimney, um, those are those are, those are clearly reshot. So is the fire blast segment at the end of that uh, episode and the zip ties duct tape episode or a segment rather Jesus um, is not reshot but it is recut. Um, the original version of that edit was uh, an old final cut file it was shot in austin but it was before um we did production on it so it was actually one of one of or was the last production uh in austin before we took over and so that was uh a a final cut file that we just could not get into um, Krillin says it would be funny if you used the original human chimney and jack o' lantern. We were thinking our original concept cut used a version of the human chimney and jack o' lantern from um, like a top one of the, one of those uh, like top scam episodes on Scam School where they reshot. They did go and reshoot a bunch of of those. Um, um, and we are back from the break. Uh, and, and then just even then the audio was not very good on it and I don't think we had the footage for that either so we figured we'll just reshoot it because it's it wasn't it was hard to save so here's that map that I was talking about it has to be cropped in to kind of you can see the the line sort of um, go in towards the poles uh, funny story about leaving the act about when we go out of that graphic and back into Brian is that um, one of the notes that we got was uh, that in the the raw version of that <laughs> that stand up um a homeless gentleman was is walking beside Brian and was passing him and the thing that we got was um did did you guys get a release for for that homeless gentleman uh and we said no cuz no, no um and so it was like we were really going to have to blur him out or we thankfully we could keep the graphic up long enough to where he just gets cut off by the graphic the 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 bump, the transition graphic um uh, Grant says, I could never figure out how to do, how to do the jack-o'-lantern. Yeah, that one's that one's tough because you have to uh, maintain your breathing. We did when we reshot it. We all of us took took turns afterwards doing the human chimney. It really it really burns a lot. Um, so here we've got uh, Dennis Rogers bending wrenches. This one has, if you've seen the YouTube video, has a lot of stuff especially up to this point has been cut out to kind of trim up um uh to, to trim up some of it for time it's a lot of like uh, going over like who dennis is and dennis is incredibly talented and and is uh, uh very accomplished um and and we we just kind of con con condensed that down just a little bit. Um, plus, like the very first thing he does is bend a really strong wrench, so uh, it, it sort of works out. Um, but this is this is another episode where it's a good episode and it's got a good payoff. But I think it's it's a it, it's maybe a little short and like very definitive takeaways like or rather definitive information right because like the, the big takeaway is like there are strong wrenches and then there are pretty shitty wrenches like the one that brian just pulled out um you know and and i think it gets the concept across but i don't know that it necessarily gets enough concrete information across but um but i think you get enough of it right like something that's thinner something that is sand sand a sand mold or whatever um yeah. Poor Maggie. Maggie is like off in the back on this whole episode. It's so it's 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 it's. I always feel uh I always feel just a little twinge of guilt when someone is is like on on the show for any reason, and then doesn't get like um it, it doesn't always have the best opportunity to to interact or or 
uh, be a part of the process. And, and you know, sometimes when we're doing card tricks or magic tricks, or whatever, people are stick around for multiple shoots and it can kind of change. But this is uh, a little unfortunate. The color on this segment is tough because that master shot is very yellow because there's a lot of the street light. But then I think we had our own lights out. It was, was a, this was a tough one. Brant, I think, did the original edit on this, and he did a really good job at that. So, also the other sort of funny thing about this is the takeaway is like, find a weak wrench and bend it. But uh, but this is good. Alistair kind of struggles with it. And yeah, he gets it. Um, earlier, you, you probably heard it. I was talking over it. Um, uh, right after Dennis bends the wrench, you can hear like he sounds really bad. His his, his audio fidelity is not very good. Uh, it's because we, we took off his microphone and moved it like on his hip so that when he bent the wrench you could get the, you could hear the snap really well but we forgot to take it back um for like a few minutes um and so a lot of i think that got cut up a little bit too so um the times that you do hear him is coming through brian's mic um this this bit this this bit here with dennis and brian with the spiky hair is um is uh, like is a also a bonus clip from an old episode, but you notice that they kind of cut off at the top. There is a revision three logo in um, in in there that we couldn't really blur out because it cuts through the guy's face, um, and so we have to we just had to like kind of zoom in a little bit, and so they're just their head gets cut off, and it's not always a great look. Uh, all right, so that's that's episode one. We just started episode two. We're at the attention here. Um, uh, yeah, so because we had the fire stuff, uh, the thing that we got was like, hey, we should you should have some some warning text. Um, there's the intro graphic, and here's Brian. Um, there's a little bit of editing trickery here on this at the very end of Brian's line here. You can hear a, a motorcycle come in. You listen for the motorcycle. So it's there's a little it's not even ADR it's just a little bit of, of nipping and tucking from another take where there's not a gr a a motorcycle riding through Brian saying that line. Um, so here's our reshot um, human chimney. Uh, 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 Stephanie and Jamie were great. They uh, we we went and and shot this at at Rusty Mule again. This was like their inside location. Uh, and apparently they go there all the time. Uh, and it was it was it was a lot of fun. They they were they were very uh, uh, very. Annoyed. You can see so there's the, the <laughs> there's a thing on that back wall when you see uh, Stephanie and uh, uh, and Jamie. Uh, you don't see it on this wide shot, but you do see it on their solo shot. There's like um it looks like a shield or or um like a piece of metal, and sometimes it's like beige. Sometimes it has lettering on it, and that's another sort of like Lone Star thing of like. Sometimes you can see it, it's like an old mobile gas logo, um, a, a super old one before it was even just called mobile. It was it's mobile gas. So see, you see the M in that shot there. But when you see it further over, you'll see it grayed out just too high, the more of it. It's kind of a weird thing. Um, there's also, see, you see the MOB a little bit, a little bit but it's, it's obscured enough. Uh, there's also the co there's also a Coke logo on that refrigerator in the background there, that's blurred. Uh, wow, that's a good. It, that 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 actually looked good with the hands kind of um, going in front of it. Blurs are are a lot easier than um, color color masks. But yeah, we we and we shot this. We reshot this from the get-go, so the original concept video that we sent them had effectively this edit in it. Um, I think it, I think it had the music. It might, it may or may not have had music. We didn't have all the music cues in. Um, this moment right here is you can just see Jay's arm as he points in. Uh, that we had to crop that in a little bit because you can very clearly see Jay raise his arm because he wants to be the one to do it. 
Uh, there's the beige in the background again. Um, we, it, just to like, uh, it's 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 one of those things where you're like you don't want to uh, you know leave someone hanging. So. All right, so now we're going into the jack o' lantern. Um, the jack o' lantern is like the human human chimney is easy. The jack o' lantern is pretty. It is, it is maybe a little dangerous. Um, but as long as you keep your breathing going, you're good. I think this is one of the one of the few times where we've actually got music pot ups because we're doing just a visual bit. Um, there's there's when when we send off the the, uh, the, the master files, um, we have to send a bunch of different audio tracks. And so one of the things we have to do is send a version of the music that is uh, undipped, um, which means that for moments like those where the music kind of pots up because nothing's kind of being said for a moment and then pots back down, you you flatten all of those out so that when they make versions for um, international audiences, dubs, edits, whatever. They have uh, level level music, um, but I think this is this is the uh, one of this and some moments in uh, in in the very in the fire blast segment are the only ones that have like musical pops like that. Um, so that was actually a pretty easy thing for us. There's a lot of things that like this being a pretty simple um, sort of edit. Um, uh, uh, sort of worked in our favor of just not, not being super complicated between like having a bunch of voiceovers and narrations. Uh, Kuan says, Jack and Lantern is the first time I called in the Proto BB Live show when it was just Brian talking to Scam School fans. Yeah, man. Uh, we, we've been watching the BB Live shows, some of those early ones on the Night, on the night Attack Rewind. Um, she's great. Oh my god. I love her energy. When we when we were finished with this shoot, there were just matches, burnt matchsticks everywhere. everywhere. Uh, okay, so we're going into our first commercial break on this episode. Uh, Funkeria says awkward high fives are so good. I'm, yes and no, but you don't. You never want to leave anyone hanging. Um, there was a. Uh, It was. I think it might have been an episode we were considering putting in in one of these in one of these pilots, um, and I think it was. Um, I, I think it's called like the hardest, uh, hardest, hardest math puzzle ever. It's, uh, the first one uh, of those, and it's it's Roberto and I think Colin was there and was it Diamond Jim? I don't know if it was Diamond Jim or someone else's puzzle, but um, I think at the very end there was there was a the I think Roberto was kind of left hanging a little bit, and that was that was um, uh, that was unfortunate. Uh, we didn't end up going with that uh, tr that episode because it was very long. It was very long and and incredibly difficult. Um, It, it was just it was a long and, and a pretty hard puzzle and so we ended up going with the six three ways math puzzle which uh, you'll see here in a bit with Jason and Colin um oh, was the, I think were the, was there another I'm trying to think of other s episodes we were considering using and then we replaced them I, I think calculus schmalculus which is coming up in the in the next bit um I wonder if that was something else. We might have added that because when we got rid of hardest math puzzle ever, we had so much extra time, and calculus schmalculus was pretty pretty short. Um, that that one was from, um, uh, uh, from the Rusty Mule, and that was great. Uh, we we should go back there again. The Rusty Mule is a fantastic little bar, um, uh. It's like a bar and grill or something. Uh, oh, wait, are we coming back? We're back. Here we go. 
Westwood. We've got our opener. We've got momentum. Now we lock in that free drink with an unbeatable puzzle. I wish we reshot that stand up here with him walking in front of that red wall. We were sort of losing the light, and so we had to kind of keep the shutter speed down, so it looks a little, it's a little blurry, a little motion. Um, so now we're in calculus. Calculus has got um, uh, 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 these are like the the daughters of a fan who came out for um, some other shoots that day, uh, which is pretty cool. Um, but they were great. They were great because this is kind of like this. It's it's kind of a math puzzle, but it's it's also sort of logic-y, um, and they were they were pretty good about 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 it. Uh, this one has a very slight blur, this segment does, of Brian's beer. It's usually pointed away to the camera, but there are a couple times where you can see... Uh, um, what is it? Like vape IPA? What is it called? I don't remember what it's called. It's like Kush IPA or some shit. I think it is Kush. No, it can't be Kush. Maybe it is. Um, but see, so there's a little, there's a little bit of a blur there. Um, also, another change from the YouTube show. So this was a this episode was like two parter, a two parter. Um, but also, this extra explanation graphic here is new because um, that's one of the things that we got was like um, it, it, there's not necessarily a confirmation of what the answer is. So uh, so this graphic here is brand brand new. It's made from the, from existing things. Sam Cogswell, did the TV people not have any problem with alcohol on screen, even if unidentifiable? Um, there were some concerns, but apparently not enough <laughs> to, to, to make any changes. I mean, it's it's just, it's baked into so much of this stuff. Uh, so here's another stand-up. This is Brian in front of the handlebar. Handlebar is so great. These, those guys are amazing. Um, so yeah, so we re-edited this. Uh... And so it was, it was, uh, I think when they shot this originally, it was, it would have been three cameras. Um, but so I, it was, it was sort of fun to sort of have the original video track on top and then make cuts and see how they sort of cut some of the stuff together at the time. Um, and then we've got David Rowan here who's doing some stuff with us now, uh, Bizarre Magic. He's great. And then Adam Lyons, who I think was producing his game school at the time in Austin. Um, this is one of, uh, oh, he's got a good point. That's probably why it was TV 14. Uh, probably, probably, but there, I think there's also some Dane, the fire stuff also contributes to it. Um, um, uh, but so this is, I think this is the very last episode that aired or was produced, uh, in Austin before we took over production or rather Brian did. Uh, Stephen Cogswell says, in Canada, the ads there used to be weird, like, you can't raise beer above your head. Oh, that's interesting. Um, though, I, I would say, like, uh, the cheersing and toasting element of Scam School has become very downplayed over time. Um, to the point where it, it might be a little... Uh, unexplained in these pilots a little bit. Like, we don't... When, when we shoot Scam School, every episode has starts with a toast, and it's got a toast out and toast back. Um, but we don't uh, we don't use two of those three generally at any point, or at least we don't keep that we don't have them on screen. But it's it's a uh, it's an interesting artifact of, of this show being like ten years old. Uh, the other thing you'll probably know from from the original YouTube version of this is that this is also one half of another episode. The other half being um, how to escape from handcuffs. Um, and that, that that was a little weird because part of the pitch on that is like, well, you, use, you could use a shim and you just do this. And that. Um, but it was also kind of an ad for the Rose Ring at the time, which has a shim in it. Um, and I don't, I don't, necessarily know I, we don't even say the word YouTube in these pilots so it's I, I don't necessarily know how the self-promotion stuff uh, will go um, so you guys with the above your head thing is quote enjoying too much which is analogous to quote promoting binge drinking uh, wow that's interesting um, the funny thing about this the segment um, is I really 
there's not a lot of it didn't need a lot of color correction. I think it I, I kind of bumped the contrast a little bit, but uh, they it was really well shot at the time. Uh, right now we've kind of are relying a little more on post processing than would be great. Um, but I also I love this 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 payoff of them standing up in the big screen is fantastic. Uh, so now we've got another Dennis Rogers shout out. To keep a lookout on the right side of the frame when we go out to this next footage of baby Jason Murphy, and I think that's Allison, uh, his wife. Yeah, that is. This segment, okay, this this footage is also interesting in that they they found one of the cameras. Uh, they found they found the footage from that shoot, uh, but the file of the the multicam from the other angle of of that uh of him doing the slam uh was lost or whatever we're now at the commercial break um was lost or just it wasn't found so so the the second angle there is from the youtube version of of the moment cuz they've got the other angle in there um and then we've got the i think it was was it test tube at the time? It, it must have been because there was a square. It was a square logo, and we got the we. There's a blur on that a little bit. Um. Yeah. What? That's weird. Um. But yeah, so that was another thing. There was um. <laughs> no, Jason doesn't have kids. Um. Steve Cogswell, does the show have any things like follow me on Twitter? There's no scene shit. No, it really doesn't. Um, and I, I don't even know what sort of the, like, the, the landscape on that would be. Um, because, like, promoting the YouTube channel would be in everybody's best interests. Um, but uh, that's kind of like, uh, I think the term is snap in content. That's like additional sort of thing not always baked into the to the to the actual master file um so yeah i mean that's something that that uh would be good to have um I, another one of the sort of behind the scenes things is, is so we give we make uh this master file with all the audio tracks and stuff uh, but we also make a textless program um which which actually they they use a little bit in this coming segment um and it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It's the normal fro it's the normal show, but without lower thirds, with the text scrubbed from graphics, so that when they localize it, they can go and and make changes. And so they also get the After Effects uh, graphics master. Um, someone says, I feel like if you're a drive by and you just search Scam School, you should be able to find it on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's true. Um. Yeah. Um. What was I saying? Oh, we might. Oh, no science. I think we're back. Tuesday. Nope. Almost. Um, so, so we send them a version that doesn't have any of the graphics on it, and we send them the program master so that they can overlay whatever they need. So, I think in this coming segment, if if this is the one that I think it is, uh, which is six three ways, um, uh, for some reason they changed, they they changed. Uh, like there's um when 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 Brian's reading off the question, it was a big graphic above above everybody's head. Oh, we're back and we're listening to the attention. Um, and I got removed, and and that was that was um a little weird. Uh, so we're back here with a uh, first African American professional baseball player. Um, this graphic of of um Walker is from Wikipedia. There's old enough that it's in the public domain, so <laughs> yeah, that's very cool. Um, uh, also, the uh, again one of the one of the smaller but very distinct changes between these things, uh, these 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 segments is the how they start so that we can have enough time for the lower thirds to be on screen. So yeah, the, normally you would have it in the in the top frame here when he's saying it, the the question. It was. Right out. So, I wonder because I think that did go out of out of the that special area at least a little bit. So, uh, I think they replaced it in the overlay that we had with just just an overlay, and I guess they remade that overlay. 
Colin was great on this. Colin's, Colin's always fun and, and snippy. Right. Not snippy. I right, see they, they just made a smaller one at the bottom there. I don't think that's uh that's not the original um font. Uh, they I think that it looked like they used Roboto, which we used in at least one of the other program masters. Exactly as I presented it. It's a like fundamental right here. Change how we're viewing right, um, so I think it was right. Uh, the little bit of silence where Jason is saying change, um, you can kind of see it, but it's, it's so fast. Um, that moment is actually super sped up because I guess that gap of, of that silence of him talking is, is a little longer. So I think when Brant made the original edit, he, he just. Squeeze, squeeze it. Uh, and yeah, and so actually bringing this this overlay of the original question again um, was was what was like maybe the only thing uh, of feedback that we got from showing this to a few people. Um, uh, Stephen Cogs, how long before air did you deliver the final to them and they made edits past that point? Um, what day is today? Probably like it. It was supposed to be about two weeks ago. It was probably a few less than two weeks ago, um, because they made whatever these edits are, and then they also helped us with some of the audio stuff because um, uh, making audio for uh, uh, broadcast standard audio is no none of our um, wheelhouse. So we originally were going to shop it out to another company, but then uh, Science Channel said that they could help us out. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, we didn't, um, uh, yeah, um, what was I saying? Uh, also, yeah, that, that's something Brian that mentioned in, in, uh, in his watch through, that was, that's the only like organic send to break in from, from these episodes. Most of them we cut, uh, we, we present the whole episode, scam school episode, um, as a full segment. Um, just because there's sh some the ones that we had were short enough, or they've been cut down enough. Um, but yeah. Um, mm, 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 mm. Uh, by the way, um, since we're kind of getting a little bit up there in time, I did want to uh, at least publicly thank uh, everybody at Science Channel, including Lindsay, uh, everybody at Seeker, including uh, Lori and Tom, uh, for all their help. In getting this through uh, a lot of a lot of support from everybody and so uh, it was fantastic uh, working with them um, oh I says huh battle so he's talking about the commercial there's there's a bunch of battle bots commercials uh, in between all of these I guess yeah they brought battle bots back a, a year or two ago I think yeah so you know you got it flaunt it mm. uh, but but yeah, I, uh, so, uh, this is, this is based on the PlayStation view, um, VOD or DVR version. So, uh, there are way more commercials than I'm used to. I, I tuned in early this morning. I was like, oh man, this is a lot of commercials. <laughs> oh, everybody says ESPN does drone racing. Drone racing seems cool. That seems like a cool thing. Drone racing. Um. Uh, so what is coming up? So the end of six three ways. Oh, mm, I got this wine. I got this Moscato earlier today when I went to the store. Um, and it's pretty. It's surprisingly tart. It's tarter than I thought. I I mostly got it because it says Castillo on it, but whatever. Uh, Cam Jack says this seems like the same commercials Directv presented. Yeah, I mean, I think um, I, I don't think Science Channel has. Um, like different affiliate feeds or different time zone feeds. So you'll probably see most of the same ads, especially on the digital platforms like this. Uh, it might be a little different on terrestrial where um, they can insert different ads. Um, speaking of, uh, one of the interesting things that we had to um, provide, um, and I don't, I don't necessarily know that there are um, um, any... Any, any 
moves that use these, but one of the things that we had to give was um, something called Woo's Windows of Opportunity. Um, and these are like moments in each segment that are like, hey, here is 40 seconds where there's no graphics on screen and we didn't just talk about a kid dying or whatever and, and you can overlay additional stuff onto it as necessary. Right, we are back from break. Um, and so like, like this segment, so just, um, in, in particular, the six, three ways, uh, was actually kind of tough because we have that overlay on so much of the, the screen. There are some, some things that say you can't, it can't, you can't have one that starts after a certain amount of time and you have to have a certain amount of space cleared, but because we have the overlay, it was, um, uh, it was a little tough. Uh, oh, it's one feed for all and then direct TV as local commercials. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll, if depending on, so like PlayStation view doesn't add local, they just use the national commercials. Uh, I love the, I love the payoff of this, this segment. This is such a cute little idea. Um, and this is also like the second, like, uh, puzzle of this episode. That's like, you, so what the fuck? You can't, you, you, you. This is pretty fun. Nine, nine minus 10, 40 minus 50. And then this, uh, this, this um, split screen look uh, was really good. It's the cut on it. The cuts on it are just subtle enough that you, um, they kind of match up with Brian's timing enough that you don't, you don't notice it. <laughs> I think for some reason, this last moment here, we reshot? Or not like reshot, but like it was a second take. We took a second take on that goodbye, which was weird. Um, so so up here is, is the other segment that we reshot, the um, uh, alternative to f the alternative fuel for the, the fire blast. Um, the original version of this had um, Roberto and a gentleman whose name I no longer remember now. Um, but this was a real long time ago, and it was not well made. <laughs> it was tough because, like, uh, like a halfway through, Brian just looks like shit, um, and b um, it was really long. It was really long, and so so we cut it, we cut it down a lot. Or we, originally we, we were gonna just cut it down, but also we had other things like Roberto says, "Oh God damn" or something, and we'd have to bleep that. And Brian says, "Coleman camp fuel," which he always says, uh, and there are blurs and stuff. So, um, so we just reshot it. It was it was just easier to reshoot, and so we reshot it here at Moon Tower, um, and it was. Uh, it, it came out really great. A uh, little blur on here is the hats that these guys wear, which is a little bit of a blur to hide um, hide, hide some of these. Um, hide some of these. Um, but but these kids were great. Um, they were had super. I think I think they're most of them are related. I don't know if it's by marriage or, 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 or like they are married to each other or whatnot. But, uh, I, I was looking through the releases the other day and I was like, Oh, these, th these are all, all of these kids have the same last name. <laughs> uh, but they were great. Their energy was fantastic. Uh, and this is, this is maybe our most like scientific segment in terms of like explaining combustion and explaining a, com a, a fuel air mixture. Um, but it turns out that there's a much safer way to do yeah. the fire blast effect using, of all things, cornstarch. Uh, you take a mouth of cornstarch, and you're going we, uh, to... We, when we shot this, um, we, 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 we've got light panels because it's, obviously, it's the middle of the night. And, um, they kept going out. We need to get new light panels. They kept going out, like, in the middle of the... And we were just, like, kind of, like, it, it's always tough because, like, you got these kids you don't know the show and and we've got only so much time and then you got other people who are watching and 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 the gm that night apparently was not told by their events guy that we were even coming um so we really needed to be on our best behavior um and so this was actually a four camera shoot um 
uh, we've got because um, we've got Jeff Jeff working with us now, um, and so uh, uh, Brant also had his his A two S his Sony A two S A seven A seven S two whatever. Um, so so like that shot anything anything where you can see a zoom is is Brant's A seven S and it's uh, uh, that footage all came out great. Uh, open by us. Did making scams go into a TV pilot change how you make scam school from now on? Making sure Legos aren't singing, etc. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're gonna try to be a little bit better about that stuff. Um. Yeah. Though I think I don't know. We we have I we have ideas such that if if we get picked up or or do more episodes, we will have even better hygiene than this. Part of me would love to go back to just doing YouTube and not not giving a shit about logos. Though. But it was really great that this worked out. Um, uh, just in terms of like everybody kind of getting the the blowing motion. But yeah, th those are great. Those are fantastic. Oh, we might get cut off a little bit here with the DVR, but um, so this is this is the fun. We we originally so we've got this clip here of the coffee creamer flamethrower with tall beer dude um and his wife i believe um but when we were a little unsure about um uh, if we would get releases from them in time um we actually used um a clip from the modern rogue where we talk about silent fires um and there's a big explosion but i think this this clip we we shot that stand up for this clip um um, and so once we got that cleared, we went out with that. Um, these fucking these stand-ups right on the street here. It's the this one here at the end of this episode and the start of the very first episode, just had the most um, the most blurs, and it was it was a real pain in the butt. Um, but but that was that. Um, so that was the Scam School pilots. I hope. Uh, uh, I hope I hope you enjoyed them. Uh, been getting a lot of nice words from everybody, and and that's been really great. Um, but yeah, I I, I won't know m more about this until y'all do. You know, it's 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 a n totally new landscape for us. So we honestly have no idea. Um, you know, everything we heard was that they love it. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, but thank you guys for checking this out. Um, I'm going to call it a little early. Um, uh, normally I would do like a rewind today, but, um, I'm going to take the day off. So, um, uh, thank you guys again for coming and hanging out. Uh, this was a lot of fun and, um, uh, until next time. I'll see you guys later. Uh, maybe we'll do a rewind tomorrow. I don't know. We'll see. Keep an eye out. You turn the follow notifications on. You're good. You're good. You're good. All right. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.